So today we're going to tie a real classic pattern, the Alcare Caddis. There's a ton of content out there probably already on this fly, but for the sake of completeness, we thought why not? Let's just include it in our videos as well. Maybe show you a couple different things that, that we like to do with it. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this started. I like to start at the head, the add that hook and just go back. If you keep about an inch of thread coming out right there at the end, your turns will be a little bit faster and you'll be a little bit more efficient. So we'll stop there at the end. And again, just like that pattern last week that we did, um, that, ad that adult stimulator, I'm gonna keep some thread here, about six inches hanging off, uh, so I can secure the hackle later and not have to use wire. So speaking of hackle, let's go ahead and attach that hackle. And I've already pre-sized this hackle, but basically the way I size hackle is, you know, you don't want it to be, um, it can go past that, you know, the, the point of that hook for sure, but I find a, the perfect size is, you know, probably right at that hook, at that hook point, or it can go a little bit below, you know, two and stuff, but you don't want it way up here, half, you know, in between the hook point and the hook shank, you know, because it's not long enough, so that's kind of how I size my hackle. But anyways, let's tie that hackle in. Got it secure there. Once you've got that hackle secure, we can add some dubbing to our thread. And today I'm actually going to use some ginger. Some like, and it's like an orange type color. Once you got that wrapped on there, and again, you always want to wrap your dubbing in the same direction. You can work your way up towards the eye of the hook. If you run out, just get some more dubbing. Spin it on your thread. No big deal. I wet my fingers a little bit when I when I'm spinning dubbing onto the thread. It seems to keep it a little bit more secure while you spin it. That's probably pretty good. We don't want to go all the way to the eye because we want to save some room for the for the head of this fly and also to finish it. So now what you're going to do is take that hackle and again if you watched that stonefly tie last week you know that I'm pretty generous with my hackle. Oops. If you ever make a mistake just go back and fix it. Don't 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 think it's it that's all that's it and it's done. Go back and always fix your mistakes. You'll be better feel more confident with that fly later. As you can see, I, uh, I'm not shy with my hackle. That's pretty, those are pretty close wraps there. But this fly is gonna float really nice and high for me. And you don't gotta be cheap with your hackle if you're tying your own flies. You should be proud, you should be happy with the way you're tying them. If you go buy, you know, flies at a shop, you know, if, Especially if they're cheap, you know, you'll see probably wraps that are twice the gap that I have here on this hackle. And it's because they're trying to save hackle, right? <laughs> they're trying to they're trying to use as, as minimal materials as possible. And you can see as I wrap around that hackle there, I'm just kind of wiggling that thread so that it doesn't catch too many hackle fibers. I got to the head now. Secure that thread, and again, you know, I just think that using thread versus wire kind of eliminates some unnecessary weight on this fly. Clip that off there. So now we take our pre-stacked elk hair for the wing here. And you want to size that. You don't want it too short. That's too short. It's, you know, that's a lot closer, I mean a lot behind this, too far behind this bend of this hook here. And you don't want it sticking way out either. So I kind of try to maybe line it up with that bend and maybe just a little past it. And then you come in and you secure that wing. A couple of, couple of easy wraps, kind of pull it tighter and then you can go four or five times there. Some people will clip that head now but what I like to do is pull that material back and tie underneath the head because it'll keep that head facing up. 
and uh, versus diving down into the river and it just seems to work a little bit better. And what I'll do is I'll actually whip finish this fly right now. Just keep that material behind. So I got a whip finish on there. And then I'll grab this material, all that excess stuff, don't grab the wing, and kind of, you know, say how, how, how large do you want that head to be? If you put it too short, it's kind of worthless to even have one. So I like to go just a little bit past the eye of the hook there and clip it. It's kind of a larger head, but it's all good. You can always go back and cut it up, cut more off if you want to. Anyways, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish one more time. Try not to catch too many of the little fibers in the head. It looks good. Come in here, trim it real close. Take a peek and you know if you see some sloppy stuff, just come in and fix it. Don't don't worry about it. It's, it's okay to kind of correct your flies once you've kind of completed them, but yeah, that's the Alcare Caddis. Looks pretty good. See you next time. Hey friends, how's it going? I hope you've been enjoying these tutorials. If there's things about them that you like or dislike, don't be afraid to use the comment section below. We actually do read the comments and we'll address them in time if we can. If you missed the first three videos in this series, you're actually seeing previews for those videos on your screen right now. If you're on a PC, just click on the video you wanna see. If you're on a smartphone, click the upper right hand corner of your screen and you'll get previews for the full, all three videos as well. If you have enjoyed our content, we're asking that you just please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. And once again, we just wanna say thanks for watching.